Yeah, so uh, I am Isuru, uh, open source enthusiast and contributor, uh, specifically on uh, cloud and container native uh, technologies. So if anyone else likes to introduce themselves uh, who are in the call, go ahead and do. Hi, I'm Anand. I'm working on Celery SDK, specifically on language side. I'll be working closely with the syntax of Cell. Uh, hi, I'm Madhun, and uh, I've been mostly working on uh, observability related aspects, and uh, also have been contributing to different different areas of Celery. Hi, I'm. Hi, I'm. Hi, I'm. Hi, I'm. Hi, I'm. Um, um, I also contributed. I also contributed to the uh, the Celery project. Hi, I am Miraj. I am uh, mainly working on Celery runtime. Hi, I am Hasinth. Uh, I am mainly working in the identity and access management side of uh, Celery. Uh, hi, I am Minoli. I am specializing in UI UX in Celery. Hi, I am Sindhuja. So, uh, I am the project manager of the Celery and uh, I'm, I have been working on observability some stuff a bit. So, have we introduced everyone? Okay. Uh, hi, I am Madhuka. Uh, I am mainly working on the Celery CLI and uh, integration tests. Yeah, thanks. Uh, hi. Uh, Hi, I am Tarindu. Uh, I have been working on uh, Celery Hub deployment related things uh, plus some security uh, uh, areas. So, Hi, I am Adusha. I, I contributed to Celery Hub mainly and working on Celery project. All right, I think uh, everyone in the call has introduced themselves. So. Uh, Let's uh, kickstart this uh, first ever Celery community call. Uh, as a starting point, we have a brief introduction to Celery. Uh, let me share my screen and do a small presentation about uh, basically introducing Celery. Can you all see my screen? Yes, we can. Yeah, so uh, yeah, this is a basic intro into Celery. And uh, before uh, going into details of Celery, let's take an example of uh, the complexities of managing thousands and thousands of microservices. Now, uh, this InfoQ article, uh, this information is there in this InfoQ article, they are uh, about Uber. They had 20 microservices in 2014, but uh, within a couple of years, the number of microservices actually exploded into uh, 1200. Uh, so such microservice explosion like provides you with a number of challenges. If you take an example, how do you troubleshoot? Say earlier when you had one monolith or when you had the several apps, when you run into an issue, you know where to look, you know where to debug, but when you have thousands of microservices, how do you find out what, what microservice is like causing the problem? That's a real issue. So this again is kind of a connection diagram of uh, Uber microservices, which was uh, in this year. Uh, now we do not know what exactly this, the size of these dots mean, but uh, what we can see here is that there are lots of uh, connections, point-to-point -point connections made between the microservices. Of course, Uber might have their own uh, tools, management planes, so that they are able to cope with this complexity, but still uh, there seems to be lots of room for improvement. So the key challenges, now if you look at this previous diagram, you can see it's very hard to decipher what is the architecture and like how things work there's no clear architecture. And uh, since there is no boundary between the proper, proper boundary does not exist between these microservices, it's very hard to govern. Basically, you can't apply a policy and then because of that, uh, there is uh, 
there is no proper versioning aspect and uh, the security applying security is very difficult as well so how about kubernetes and service mesh uh, kubernetes and service mesh does indeed a good job in solving this up to some extent but uh, it doesn't completely solve the problem uh, one of the main reasons for that is that kubernetes and my uh, the service mesh concept uh, still does not have that uh, concept of a aggregated uh, a bounded context it just takes the microservice by itself and tries to solve these problems so another problem is that the deployment concept the deployment artifact definition is primarily based on yaml which is not very much developer friendly uh, and there is no clarity at build or test phases basically you have to deploy your code into the cluster and then only you would know whether there are any problems so everything is working fine so this, this brings us to this cell architecture and cells. So cell-based architecture or else CBA is aimed at bringing proper structure, proper management to this uh, complex microservice uh, systems. This GitHub link points to the original cell-based reference architecture document. I will not be going through that in this uh, presentation, but you can just have a look. But let's take uh, take a look at the illustration of a cell to see how a cell is comprised of. Now this is a basic illustration of a cell. You can see that there are uh, several microservices enclosed within the cell. Uh, a microservices is wrapped to a component, and component is the building block, the 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 smallest building block uh, which comprises of a cell in the salary terms. And you can see that there is actually a boundary around this cell which separates the outside world and what is inside the cell. And there's a cell gateway which is which is acting like the single entry point to this cell. Now, by having a cell gateway here and which, which acts like the single entry point, we can uh, actually get rid of most of the complexity that we, sh that we saw just a few minutes ago in this uh, particular connections diagram where services are allowed to like uh, to make many to many connections like basically any service is allowed to talk and uh, talk to any other service which is very much like uh, complex so this cell is self-contained it can be built it can be tested it can be run as a unit and since this uh, exposes only what is necessary it has an api concept via this micro gateway which is the cell gateway denoted in this picture and it can be properly versioned as well. So how, how does Celery actually work? Uh, the workflow starts when a cell developer would uh, write a cell description using Ballerina language. Ballerina is, an, a language, is a language which is targeted specifically for integration purposes, but you do not need to know a lot about the Ballerina language to write a cell description, just simple, just simple construction construct as functions types would do and once you have uh, once you have the cell description you can build it using this celery cli which will give you this cell image and once you have the cell image you can actually push it similar to how you push a docker image to this celery hub and another team who is interested in this cell can pull the image and then run it that means deploy it into this celery mesh runtime so what exactly the Celery Mesh runtime comprises of? It comprises of Kubernetes, Istio, as well as a little bit of magic from <coughs> Celery itself. A magic in the sense, just a simple set of CRDs, which makes Kubernetes, which like lets Kubernetes know that these are cells and so that you can actually go and use the kubectl utility to uh, do CRD, CRUD operations on these cells uh, in the Kubernetes cluster. And we have a very powerful uh, observability and visualization tools in, in build to salary uh, so that you can actually visualize yourself in the build time as well as the runtime. When you say salary is code first, what does that exactly mean? All the, all the nice features, the powerful features which are in a programming language get inherited in the cell uh, writing time because this approach is code first, such as type validation, 
IDN tooling support uh, like uh, auto completion and similarly similarly to how you would like uh, define a function and then reuse it in your code you can use those best practices in defining a cell definition as well we believe that this provides a better developer experience than just using a set of yaml files and the cell code can comprise of these components uh, this set of uh, constructs actually a component which is like a wrapper around the microservice ingresses which denote how the traffic should come in what are the apis and then like you can model the dependencies because your cell your, the cell you are designing might be depending on another cell and you can attach scaling policies and the list goes on this is a simple comparison between the celery code and the yaml yaml description of a similar similar code which will be deployed into the kubernetes environment now you can see that the celery code is much more simpler and developer friendly whereas the kubernetes representation sorry the yaml representation is like uh, quite quite complex and you can actually see a significant uh, less number of lines of codes in the code first approach which is a very very big advantage for any developer as i mentioned earlier celery provides very rich capabilities for ob observability and visualization i will not go into much details of this because we'll be like conducting a demo which will like showcase these capabilities shortly yeah celery hub is our image repository for cells you can push cells and you can pull and any other interested party can pull those cells which are in the uh, celery hub actually this you can work with a docker repository similar to docker hub as well but if you are using celery hub you will get some additional capabilities such as the stats for your uh, cell, cell images as well as some advanced searching capabilities as well so this is an existing uh, application which is the hipster shop which we took which has uh, like uh, around 10 plus microservices and which we converted to uh, a cell based the cell based architecture just as a poc now if you can see this uh, this diagram this has a fair amount of complexity since you can't like uh, really uh, at a glance you can't see what is going on because there are like rows leading from different different microservices like connecting to different different other microservices so this is again like a scaled down version of that uh, uber microservices connection diagram which we just saw but we took this code and without doing any changes to source code we were able to like uh, use the cell cell architecture and like uh, uh, create a few cells and like reduce this complexity and once we did once we did that uh, the cell this this set of microservices within the cell architecture looks like looked like this so you can see that there are five cells and the complexity and the manage manageability of this is like uh, far less easier than uh, the previous diagram the ingresses and egresses the traffic coming in and out of each cell is properly marked so at a high level at a glance you can actually understand what is going on this is the simplicity which celery will bring to your uh, to your set of microservices yeah so you are if you are interested in celery uh, you can of course download it in try it. Uh, 0.4 is our latest and greatest release and you can of course go ahead and fork star as on github join the mailing list and slack channel as well as any 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 type of contribution is very much welcome to so thank you very much uh, i'll hand over to anuruddha for a short demo then we'll have another demo by nadun uh, about observability uh, and if you have any questions, we can uh, take them after that. Thank you, guys. Okay, thanks, Sifu. Uh, let me share my screen. Can everyone see my screen? <clears throat> so I'll be deploying two samples. One will be a simple Hello World API, and another will be a complex, little bit complex, Espresso API. So let me explain the first one, uh, first sample that we are going to do. So this one is a Hello World API cell. In this one, uh, <coughs> we will be simply wrap the uh, Hello API with the cell and expose it to our cell gateway. And finally, 
to the outside via the global gateway that we have deployed. So let me explain about my setup first. I have deployed the uh, Celery on Google Kubernetes cluster. In that one, I have inst uh, installed Istio and Celery as a deployment. And my uh, Celery CLI is pointing to that cluster. <coughs> so before going on to this one, uh, let's look at the code that how it looks like. So uh, the code is written in Ballerina, so we can do a hello world API dot Ballerina and let's see. <coughs> so be to become a cell file, you have to implement two methods, build method and the run method. And additionally, you can implement the uh, test method if you have test to run on the cell. So uh, let me explain the build method. So what build method this is, uh, when you execute the celery build, the logic written in this cell build method will execute. And the run method, when you run the cell, so you can uh, you still execute the run method. Okay. So, uh, so in the cell, uh, we have two concepts called components and cells. So you can wrap multiple components into a cell. So in this uh, example, if you look at this one, if we have one component and we have wrapped that one into a cell and expose it via the gateway. So this is the code that does that. So what we have is a, a component declaration. We have given the name and we have given the source image. This is a Docker image and this is written in Go. So you can uh, deploy any type of API any, written in any language using Celery. And uh, so this uh, <coughs> component has an ingress and it is a HTTP API ingress exposed on port 90. And it has the context of uh, hello and it accepts any request from this uh, resource and in this uh, exposed keyword we have exposed this as global so in, uh, what we do is uh, we expose it as cell gateway and we also expose this as the global gateway from our cell <coughs> and uh, finally we have created the cell uh, construct and we have added this component into the cell construct so now we have a cell with this component in it so finally, what we are going to do is uh, we are going to build this cell image. So to do that, we have an inbuilt cell create image uh, which accepts these two parameters. So uh, let me build this one first. So the command will be celery build uh, ballerina file name and then the uh, organization name and your uh, cell name and the version. <coughs> So uh, once the cell is built, we can do a celery list images and view the image that is there. So uh, celery is a self documentation uh, documented it means the way that it is documenting itself. So if you want to view the documentation of any image, you can do celery view and give the image. So this will open up a draw and it will document the diagram that you have written. So we have one component and expose it via the gate. So <clears throat> let me explain the run method. In the run method, we are not doing anything fancy. We just load the cell image and we just uh, execute this create instance that is available natively in the cell gate. So uh, let's deploy this one. We run, use the celery run command to do that. And uh, I am giving my image name under the my API. And uh, as the instance name, when it is deployed, I want this. Uh, I want that instance to be named as Hello API. So you can deploy multiple uh, instances of same image with multiple names. So I'll be uh, deploying this first. <coughs> So, Celery uh, use uh, Kubernetes underneath. If you do a kubectl get pods, you can also view the Kubernetes uh, uh, <coughs> Kubernetes pods are getting created along with this uh, cell instance. Once, uh, let's wait for it to be deployed. So, everything is running and uh, now the cell should be up and running. So, now we can do a celery list instances, which will list the deployed API that we have. So in uh, so if you look at the first diagram that I have shown you, so we will be exposing this one as the global gate. So we are using WSO2 API manager to do that. So let's access that API manager. 
So this is installed as a part of salary installation and the API will be published automatically by the server. So this API is published. Now let's try to access that. So I'm going to sign in. Log in and subscribe to this one. Generate some keys. Get the access token. And I'm going to curl and get the out. Okay, so I got the output. Hello world. So this is the simplest form that we can deploy and uh, now uh, now let's say I want to push this image into a, a salary hub. So what I have to do is do a simply do a salary push and it will ask for my credentials and it will push this one into the salary hub. deployed let's see whether it's pushed okay <clears throat> now if I go to salary hub and see so this one got updated just now <clears throat> so uh, this is the simplest cell now I'll be moving on to a more complex example in this one we have two cells tech front uh, we'll be deploying a pet store application in this one we have two cells tech backend and pet front end in the backend, we have four uh, control, uh, four components: controller, catalog, and customer. And the controller is exposed via the cell gateway, and this is not exposed via the global gateway. And in the front end, we have this portal component. This is a React application which calls this uh, controller's APIs, and uh, we are exposing this one as a via the global gateway as a web. So let's uh, look at this tech B cell uh, first. So similar to the previous one, uh, we have five components. So these <coughs> components are written in various languages, and uh, so we have wrapped those in uh, as Docker images and provide the component details and expose the APIs that they are uh, exposing. So this one, uh, <coughs> we have orders component, customer component, and catalog component. And we have the controller component which will be exposed uh, locally. So thus uh, we have set this uh, exposed as local property. In the previous sample we exposed this as global. So uh, if you look at this controller component, it requires to talk to this catalog customer and order component. So in order to do that wiring, we have declared these uh, environment variables and we are passing those values to this controller component. So uh, <coughs> at the uh, build time, we have this uh, utility method that uh, you can use to uh, populate these host names to this uh, expected environment variables. So when you deploy this one, all the values will be resolved and available to the controller component. And finally, we have at this uh, dependencies so that it will start up uh, according to the dependencies. So this controller component depends on catalog orders and customer component. And finally we have created this pesto backend cell and add those components and we are using this create image method. Let me quickly build that one and run this uh, And going this uh, <coughs> so that BE will be created, and uh, <coughs> and the run method uh, we are just calling this run function, and uh, I will not go into the test function; it will be explained in a later call. So we will be uh, moving on to this front end. So this one is done. Now we are going into this portal component. So <clears throat> we have uh, one component. 
which has that uh, docker image contained in the reactor as the source and then we have a web binger if you look at this uh, control component we have then a http api ingress but this one we will be exposing as a web ingress we have this so uh, we have configured open id connecting to this one and uh, these are the parameters that are required to uh, work with that one and uh, if you look at the sample the portal component requires this uh, uh, this cell gate hosting so we will be passing that one as a uh, environment variable and we are we have wired that one using this uh, get reference utility method that is available in cell so we will be <coughs> When the build is done, uh, it will be automatically wired at runtime. <coughs> and uh, so, in the run method, uh, we have some special logic written so that uh, you can change the host names, uh, provide the URLs, uh, IDs, uh, usernames, and passwords can be read from the environment if required. So, when you are running this cell, you can just expose your host names. Uh, Usernames and password, and uh, use them to uh, add, uh, add them to the deployed container. <coughs> so uh, let's build this one. So uh, if I do a cell lift images, and if I view this image. So you will see that uh, all the diagram that you have I have shown is generated automatically. So we have portal component talking to the pet backend cell. And if you click on pet backend cell, it has a gate and five controllers, and all the controllers are connected. Control is connected to the all the other component. So uh, let's deploy this one. So I'm going to deploy the pet be. Uh, Pet front end cell first, and in this one, uh, <coughs> I'm specifying the name as pet uh, And if you look at this one, we have added the pet back end as a dependency to the pet front end. So I'm going to provide this pet back end instance name via the CLI as this uh, pet back end uh, dependency name, and its instance name will be pet D and minus d will be start of the dependency tree. So I'll be running this one. <coughs> so uh, this dependency diagram will be deployed and uh, it will be drawn and it will start up the dependency draw. So the first, it will start the bit, so back in. If we do a sit here, get ports. You see that paste or backend components are getting started. We wait for this to be deployed. Everything is fine. Okay, we can do a several list test first to make sure that it is ready. And uh, so in the code, we have exposed this uh, pesto back, uh, backend using this VOS, pesto.com. So we can access this pesto using this pesto. Uh, so this is the pesto application that we just deployed so if you remember we configured open id connect which will be talking to our internal sts for authentication so we will be logging using this one <coughs> I have been hit the login flow. Let me fill this form and ask for some details. 
and let me do some uh, generate some traffic by adding some orders do a check out on the site we have the orders list <coughs> so uh, so we have deployed this presto sample and uh, so we, this is the complex sample that we have shown with uh, five components and two cells so now then we will look into the observability part Thank you, Anurudha. So uh, you have, I mean, so far in this demo, you have been basically looking at how to deploy and run your cell instances. So I'll be going through a small demo, which uh, to actually show you how to observe this. So with Celery, uh, you actually get a inbuilt observability, and you don't need to really uh, add any instrumentation or any reporting to actually get this uh, this level of observability into your application. So that's the actual cool thing with Celery Cop service. So today I won't be actually going through the whole uh, walkthrough of the observability dashboard. I'll be just giving you a, a sneak peek of the cool features. So this is basically the landing page of our Celery dashboard. And you, here you can see the pet FP instance, the pet V instance, and also the Hello API instance that's under the deployed before. And on your right side, you can see a quick uh, look at the metrics whether how, how many of them had been actually i mean the status the status code wise breakdown and also you can see the instances that are there and if you actually click on an instance you can uh, fill down and sorry uh, if you click on an instance you can actually drill down and check the instances uh, the components that it comprises of so i'll quickly go into the uh, FT compact. So here you can see this is basically a this is basically the components uh, landing page, and here you can see all the dependencies the FT depends on. So if this is a very complex application uh, like Hipster Shop, you'll be able to see all the all the other cell instances that this particular instance depends on. Also, you can actually go to the metrics view and check all the metrics. Uh, the actually the uh, from HTTP traffic uh, basically since this is actually an HTTP uh, HTTP HTTP ingress based instance you can actually see the HTTP based breakdown and the success failure rate the average response times and the request volume and different different information and you can actually go and drill down and view and see what are the uh, metrics so I don't actually go into much detail. You can, I mean, if you go to the component, tab, you can actually drill down further and go to the component and see how it, here you can see how this pet FP cell, uh, you can see the actual boundary of the pet FP cell and the whole component inside it and also the pet BE instance which this portal depends on. So the, the cool thing is that this is not actually a, this is not actually something that's built uh, using the cell images data this is actual runtime data so uh, for example uh, I mean, but under the short before using the cell review command was basically something that was generated in the build time so if you can actually see what what had actually happened in the runtime and see how they interact and also in the same way you can see the component level metrics as well and here if you go to the Case pods uh, tab. You can actually see the pods that have been deployed, and you can even go to pod metrics, node metrics, and uh, drill down further as well. But I won't actually go into that much detail as of now. You can actually, uh, if you log into Graphon, which is the default dashboard that we keep, yeah, you can actually see uh, a further drill down of K Kubernetes levels information. So uh, another cool thing here is that uh, if you go, uh, we have a separate tracing section as well. There, if you go and search, let's select the pet B instance and search, and here you can see all the uh, traces, the all the requests that had actually gone through pet B. And if I am to select one of these, which is uh, I'll select the first one. So 
if you take a look at this, here you can see, uh, I mean, if you had actually worked with things, uh, tools like Giga, you can see a similar way. But the cool thing here is that you can actually, uh, you can actually see a breakdown of the cell instances. So, so if you look at this, you can see that there are two colors. So this first color, the pink one, is basically, it, it basically belongs to the pet FE instance. And the orange color uh, line, they actually belong to the pet B instance. So you can actually, if you, even, even if it's a really complex application, you can actually clearly see the boundaries and see the times that uh, the the response time that uh, each component had actually taken, and you can actually try to uh, drill down to your problems and uh, performance issues and different different uh, issues that you may face. And uh, another cool thing about tracing is we actually give different perspectives of your traces. So if you go to the sequence diagram here, you can actually see a quick, quick uh, tracing diagram that have been generated for this particular trace. So if you look at here, if you look here, you can see that there are two actors and there is a call from pet FE to pet B. And if you click on this call, you can actually drill down further and see how the how I mean how the call from pet FE to pet B is. So basically the request first comes to the gateway and the gateway calls the controller and the controller calls the cattle. And it returns and again calls the order component. And then again returns and the response returns to get it. And this is actually received by the FE component and returned uh, to, uh, to, to the browser to the user. So this is actually the trace, and you can actually uh, have a quick view of it. And this, I mean, compared to the normal uh, tracing view, this actually gives you a very uh, easy view to uh, identify problems and, uh, and debug you. And if you go to the deep, uh, dependency diagram, you can see a similar view, and you can see that the color coding is there, still there, and you can see how the request had gone in a uh, simple dependency diagram. And if you uh, if you just take a look, this whole dashboard is actually color coded, and you, and then these colors are actually uh, uniform across the whole, whole dashboard. Even if you go to the overview page, these colors will be the same. So we have uh, so the main point of actually having this dashboard is to actually have a way to monitor yourself. So this dashboard is actually completely engineered to uh, monitor yourself efficiently and build down your problems and find the components and even go further and find out which pods are having the problems and build down your issues and monitor them efficiently. So that would be that would actually conclude our uh, demo, and uh, probably in a later community for uh, a later call, we we'll probably uh, go even further and uh, probably give you cool, uh, cool, cool tips to how uh, cool tips on things like how we debug, how we debug and identify problems. For example, if you have an error, it would actually be shown here. But since we didn't actually generate any error, uh, it's not here. So probably in a later call, we'll actually drill down and give you more information and. Uh, we'll probably do, uh, we'll do more and more. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll probably do more uh, talks about this dashboard and also about the other features we have. So, yeah. So it's yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Anuruddha and Nadun, for that uh, great demonstration of Celery's capabilities. Uh, now. Uh, if any of the participants has any questions, I think like uh, we can have a discussion on those now. If you have any questions, you can uh, bring them up now so that we can have a discussion on them. Yeah, so I don't have a question as per se, so I just thought like uh, the demo went really, really good. So the congratulations team. So that's pretty good but uh, i just want to do like uh, so uh, the syntax point of view like we have done some uh, uh, usability testing right mainly so like uh, what are the feedbacks that we got can you just share like so that like other people also know what sort of things that we got so far uh, yes uh, so the one of the feedback we got was uh, getting the ingress keys of the uh, cells which are being pushed 
Okay. So the users have to go through the CLI and, you know, get those stuff. So that is a bit hard for the user in the usability point of view. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the main um, uh, feedback we got from the uh, usability testing. Some tests are still carrying on, so we'll be evaluating them and we'll be able to give a, um, a lengthy uh, description about the feedback we got. Okay. In the tests okay. later on these. So how uh, many people actually they have now have done the completed the usability testing? Um, completed as in uh, three people has started, but uh, most of them couldn't uh, finish. The, the go through the whole task list okay. but they have given uh, some uh, uh, feedback at that point because uh, for some the syntax was a bit uh, hard to um, learn and then uh, implement so um, four of them they are still the test are being um, carrying out Okay, so, uh, okay, yeah, okay, so possibly in the next community, one of the community call, we can also go through sort yes. of uh, syntax, I mean, what are the places that they found it difficult, so we can yes. go through and uh, get um, others' opinions as well. Yes. Okay. So, uh, like, uh, Rami, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I would volunteer for the uh, the, the usability test and, and BS text subject. Yeah, that would be great. Because, yes. So, I'll uh, talk to Minoli about that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's I'll great. send you the details. Yes. Cool. Thank you so much. So Ramit, maybe like uh, so as we just did the demo, like maybe you can provide like how do you feel like uh, from external point of view, like how do you feel the syntax and all? Is it like uh, easy? Like, at least like uh, easy or like just can you just uh, uh, so far like were you able to hard or like what do you think? So. Uh, when I look at the ballerina syntax, uh, it requires a little bit of, uh, from even though the code, lines of code is less, mm -hmm. uh, it requires programming uh, knowledge uh -huh. and, and how to wire it up. I think that's a, something to look for. Maybe I know that uh, Celerity is adding suggestions and stuff like that to make it easy for people. Yeah. So that's there. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, thank you, Ramit. Yeah, I think that's an important point. And I think we have like uh, already tackling this problem via our ID plugins and stuff, which we are planning for a future release. Yeah. So probably like once those are like, once those are ready, I think like uh, this ex experience of building and writing a cell will be much smoother and like much interesting. Yeah, probably. Yeah. But, uh, Sorry. But, uh, yeah, it's always the common pattern. You just uh, declare your component and your ingress and resources and con uh, props. Yeah, so that's just a yeah, true, Andrew. So maybe maybe it's like uh, you know, once we are already living in that environment. For us, it may sound very common. So I think uh, once what Ram, what Ram is saying is when someone externally like looking at this fresh. So this is the first time I saw it. Yeah, that's what. Uh, the, so that's a kind of fresh thought, right? Maybe for yeah. them, it may be a bit hard. Like uh, so, maybe like we can also. Yeah, we, we, yeah. But then that, yeah. that we can introduce it. Examples and then the suggestions coming out i think it's going to be easy come again That's can you repeat it Ramit? i didn't understand so uh, i mean uh, when you when we have samples readily available and and, and documentation be read and stuff like that mm -hmm. then the suggestions from the tooling and should alleviate the the usability and stuff like that from the, the from the uh, ballerina syntax point of view so i'm not all that worried okay right? But then this is the first, first vanilla uh, 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 experience I got. Yes. yes. So, but then any technology is like that. So therefore, I wouldn't worry too much about it. If I feel uh, after doing this usability test, it's just that it, uh, yeah. okay. then I'll give that feedback. So right. So I mean, this is the initial look on the first 10 yeah. seconds uh, exposure. So yeah. don't worry about it too much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah this is, so, yeah, I value no. Because like uh, because like uh, one of the other angle that we need to 
look into is like uh, when the person freshly looking into it like within 10 minutes he should at least get a good done at least not very detailed understanding at least a basic understanding as far as <laughs> well the demo is pretty much informative i mean i i really feel that uh, i got uh, i uh, the lot of stuff so oh. the uh, detailed understanding how celery works and what it does and etc so i mean the, and it's a great job so so that's well executed so i, I feel it's really cool okay that's great okay thank you thank you ramit uh, thank you so much ramit thank you for your feedback and we'll be waiting for your feedback on the usability test as well yes I, i'll do that I'll, I'll work with minoli on that great thank you very much uh, so then the, I would have uh, liked to see a, a, some kind of a, a, a YAML configuration also, but then I know you guys will probably do that in the next community call, so I'll look forward to that. Yes, uh, can. can you please uh, like uh, explain a bit more, uh, Ramit? What do you mean by a LAM? YAML configuration? It's like is it like a uh, the, comparison, the, or is it like starting from YAML itself? Yes, uh, the the thing that uh, okay. the, the, what you guys did with the uh, ballerina code. And the same thing being done with the uh, yeah, configuration, yes. with the code. Right. So, I, I mean, I, I think so, we'll yeah. do it in the next community call yeah. and stuff. I'll look forward to that. Computer calls. I think we can uh, take that as a point and uh, edit no, uh, ISRO for the next agenda. Yes. Yes, so, yes, uh, yes, correct. So, we have got this feedback already from some other users who are actually like using YAML okay. uh, to mm -hmm. telling that like uh, uh, just without being restricted to the code first approach, it, it's better if you can give the flexibility of handling this via YAMLs as well. So that's again in in our roadmap. We'll be like uh, doing a probably a in a future meetup, future call, community call. We'll be like looking into that to provide some description on it. Got it. Got it. So uh, another question, maybe uh, maybe I'm thinking in the wrong way, but then again, just to figure it out. Uh, so say now it's uh, there's an organization who has like a centralized logging systems like Splunk or something like that so will there be in some kind of extension point right now or in future to to send uh, logs that are coming out of cells to these uh, extensions i mean the centralized logging so currently we don't have we didn't really look into much details on the logging but however um, the, uh, the the currently like we are we are basically getting all the details from uh, istio and istio would have like have basically elastic uh, search elastic ah. stack supported for logging and other stuff so ah got it got it still work so we didn't do any additional stuff for logging and for if, as part of the observability that uh, special case features but the current logging mechanism and you know kubernetes way of logging everything everything should work okay cool so basically any extensions that is in the, the kubernetes ecosystem should work should in work with this yes got it Probably in the future, we will try to sort of integrate uh, integrate it into the yeah. dashboard as well. Yeah. Uh, okay. Similar to what you saw with Grafana, probably we'll try. But uh, yeah. at the moment, we actually don't have uh, anything. Yeah. No, just for my information, I'm not saying it's a limitation or something like that. It's just, I yeah. wanted to know. Yeah. I'm yeah. just curious. Yeah, that's, that's valid. Yeah, but that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, that's a valid point as since you mentioned as well because like uh, handling logs proper way in this kind of uh, complex microservice architectures is uh, actually a problem that we need to solve yes from salary yeah so thanks from it for that as well okay. i think that's the old all right so like uh, there's nothing much to for me to add Okay, thanks. Thanks so much, Ramik, for the for those feedback and your questions. So, uh, uh, any other participant in the call, if you have any questions, like uh, you can like uh, you can like ask them now. Uh, okay. So one more question I had was uh, now uh, say yes, Ramik, uh, go ahead. An organization wants to install uh, the the uh, the Celery Hub as a primer deployment it can be done right uh, yeah like uh, we don't actually have any documentation or anything as to say to do with it but it's definitely possible and uh, okay. all the deployment artifacts uh, we can it's actually i mean it's actually available so it's 
there is so no limitation but we are right not actually made it yet okay sorry no, I, 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 maybe in future it, it's doable right yes yes and even now if you have your own docker registry you can actually push and pull seller image into the docker registry registry itself so oh, okay it's actually there's direct limitation yeah. so you can even you can actually host your own docker registry and push and pull images to that Got it. Even to so, Docker Hub, yeah. you can actually push, and yeah, if you don't feel I like pushing to Celery Hub, yeah. but if you push to Celery Hub, you actually get uh, different uh, additional capabilities. That's the only difference. Exactly. You are free to. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, any other questions, uh, folks? Yeah, I think so. Uh, as the last item, we can just have a quick look at uh, the planned items uh, for the 0 0.5 release, which is due next week. Uh, let me share my screen real quickly. All right, uh, you can see my screen, right? Yeah, uh, so... Uh, so the 0 0.5 release, which is the next release, it's like planned for the end of next week. And we have a couple of like important, uh, important features or important things that we are going to do in that. Uh, the best, the, the most important thing is like we are going to uh, upgrade our ballerina version, uh, which is the language we are using to build our cell descriptors uh, to its 1.0 GA release, which is a big milestone for us as well as ballerina. And it's currently underway. Most of the implementation stuff uh, uh, have been completed. We are just testing it. And the design of the salary ID and tooling is also due. Uh, we won't be having anything tangible to the release, but it's mostly the design that we are aiming to complete by 0 0.5. And uh, we are refactoring and re-architecting our CLI because we felt that the code has like evolved a bit and it needs, uh, uh, it needs to be like properly managed. Uh, so that will make uh, like uh, the life easier for us to develop the CLI in future as well. And uh, we have a, we are creating a new brew based installer for Mac, uh, which is I think it's almost done as well. So those are the stuff mainly we are targeting for uh, 0 0.5 release. And uh, in future we have lots of items pending in our to do list. So like I will not go through those at this moment. Probably we can talk talk about them in our coming community calls. Yeah. I think I just wanted to add one point, Yusuf. So even though the ID yeah. stuff is just getting kickstarted, uh, the Ballerina mm -hmm. uh, I Ballerina VS Code plugin would just work, right? Okay. Yes, it's yeah yeah correct. So like I think uh, in the previous version it had some glitches which yeah. has been corrected in this one zero uh, version of the tooling plugin and it should just like the for the code completion and for the basic stuff it should just work fine oh, that's great. we'll just make sure that is uh they, i mean uh, just working perfectly i mean at least don't have any issues in the ballerina plugin as well uh just to make sure before the release i mean just uh just a just a thing that we need to do like uh, because like uh, that will be a really cool feature Yes, uh, noted, Sinja. Okay. All right, I think uh, that brings us to the close of this first ever community call of Celery. Thank you so much, guys, for joining in. I know this is like after hours for most of you. So thank you so much, and thank you for your uh, feedback and all the questions which made this uh, very interesting discussion. So hope to see you all again in a future uh, community call as well. Until then, uh, bye and take care. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye.